Hey, welcome to the Ask Sabino channel. Uh, if this is your first time to the channel, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Um, this is a channel where we talk about all things retirement. If, uh, I, I retired at 51, which was significantly early, and it gave me the opportunity and, and a unique set of perspectives to, to help others. And so my goal on this channel is simply to provide real people with real answers or real perspectives from a real retiree. Um, I don't uh, purport to be a financial expert. Um, I don't purport to be a retirement planning expert. And I do suggest that you speak to professionals as appropriate. But if you're like me, I when I was leading up to my retirement, I just wanted somebody that I can talk to, somebody that can give me some perspective. Because unfortunately, uh, there's just not a lot of people that are retiring early, at least not that I know. I know a couple. Um, I've met more since I started the channel, but it's really helping answer some of your questions. And so, and one of the ways that I know what's on your mind is through the comments. And so if there's something that's on your mind that you would like to have discussed or a question that you have, please, by all means, put it down in the comments. I read my comments every day. Uh, I try to respond to my comments as soon as possible. And I re if I don't have an immediate answer um, on a question or, or, or a topic that you bring up, I do the research and, and come back and have a conversation about it. Um, and if there's something that I speak about that you have an additional or a different perspective on, please feel free to put that down in the comments as well because it's not about being right. It's about doing the right thing and... I think I've mentioned before, and my good friend Joe Kuhn uh, talked about it and actually picked it up, is my personal mission statement, and I've had it since I was 22, is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And so um, it's nice to have friends out in the YouTube world that we can bounce ideas off of each other and, and really help uh, bring the best information to each of you. It's not about trying to make money. It's not trying to sell you anything. It's none of that. It's how do we help people like you gain a different perspective in their retirement journey or pre-retirement journey. And to take it a step further, uh, if you're not able to retire today or tomorrow, you know, are you living the life that it is that you want to live? And if we can somehow or I could somehow help you in that journey, if I can help at least one of you in that journey that I've accomplished what I've tried to accomplish and that makes me happy. So on that note, uh, let's get into it. Um, I had a question from a subscriber that I thought was, or a comment from a subscriber that I thought would make a very good topic for us to discuss today. And that comment comes from Shelly Patton, 7052. And she, had, she says to me, assuming she identifies as a she, uh, says to me, it would be helpful to have some discussion about getting your partner involved in retirement planning, as I notice that it's usually one partner much more involved than the other. And then if something happens, the, the surviving or able partner scurrying to absorb the info. So I thought that was a great, great comment because as I go around YouTube and look at the YouTube universe, there are some channels where you have a husband and a wife or a partner and a spouse that are both involved in the conversation and, and the journey together. But generally, like in most things, and please tell me in the comments if your situation is different, is different people in a relationship will generally be responsible for different things. So one person may be responsible for doing dishes. The other person may be responsible for cooking. The one person may be responsible for paying the bills. The other person, they may be responsible for something else. And so what I, what I surmise from that is as I look at these YouTube channels, there's perhaps one partner or another that's responsible for the retirement planning process. And so what I'd like to talk about today is I'd like to give you 10 things or 10 reasons that it's important for you to have uh, yourself and your partner or have uh, both people involved in the retirement planning process. And I think when we get to number 10, pay special attention to that one because 
That one won't just help you in the retirement planning processes, but this will help you in your, in your life in general, um, particularly in your relationship with your spouse. But as I was thinking through, I, I thought it was interesting um, because when we talk about the communication, I have my notes here, so I apologize if I'm looking down. Um, but as we as we look at the uh, retirement picture and we when we start to take a look at people being involved in the in the process, I, I thought it was interesting because there's a a statistic that says twenty to thirty percent of gray divorces and gray divorces are people that are a little bit older that are retired that are getting divorced but and i don't know the number of how many of those folks get divorced but i can tell you that according to this statistic 20 to 30 percent of gray divorces are due to retirement related issues which leads me to believe that some people are more involved than others or one spouse or one partner or one significant other, whatever the operative term is, and maybe we use significant other for the purposes of this conversation, are more involved in the, the retirement planning processes and the other one's not feeling one person to be left out and, and creating a, a bunch of angst. And so I, 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 so I wanna thank Shelly uh, for, Shelly Patton for asking that question because I think it's a, it's a, it's a key, key comment that I think is going to help uh, a bunch of you out there. So, you know, so I have 10 reasons. And, and number one is that you have a shared goals. You have a set of shared goals and vision. Uh, you hear a lot of people talk about this singularly, but it's incredibly important that you and your spouse are on the same page as it comes to retirement. Because if one person wants to go and travel and the other person wants to use it as a period of downtime, you're going to have a conflict. Um, one of, and in my particular situation, my wife and I have, um, we've talked, our whole retirement planning process uh, came together. Now, we started about between about seven and 10 years ago um, with putting together an estate plan and and that's what got us thinking about, you know, is this retirement thing even possible and getting a financial advisor? So we've been there. And so now that we're both retired, we're both on the same page. Um, and there's days that we have downtime. There's days that we that we go out and do things. In fact, um, you know, we just recently celebrated our, our anniversary and um, we uh, just talk about how much in sync we are on, on most things and, and how easy it is. And it it helps us with with all of the planning and, and those things because we know what it is that we're that we're trying to do. Um, number two, financial cohesion. You know, it helps with the understanding of the total financial picture. Anybody that's had a relative that's passed away um, and that was by themselves knows how difficult it is for the other partner or for others to just understand the financial picture where are their uh, bank accounts, where are their financial documents, um, you know, what bills need to be paid while the estate process is going through uh, probate. There's just a whole host of things. And, and imagine that if something happens to you, then if your spouse isn't involved in retirement processes, imagine the amount of stress on top of the stress of you being gone that, it's, that, that they have if, if they don't know where those things are. And so it's important to have that, that financial cohesion. And then you, it also helps with, with making better decisions as you go down the path, um, knowing what it is that you're, that you're planning for. If you're putting money away, what are you putting money away for? How are you putting that money? What are the accounts that you're putting that money away, away for? And, and where are all the income sources that you have? Um, number three, expense management. Um, by both of you having conversations about what you plan to spend in retirement, it helps you better plan your expenses. When my wife and I were putting together our retirement plan, we were in the office of our financial advisor really drilling in for probably about six to eight months, just putting things in our retirement budget, making sure it was dialed in, me knowing what it is that she wanted to do, her knowing what it was I wanted to do, what are, what are those things? What's going to be our cost of health care? 
How much do we plan on uh, spending on travel? What type of lifestyle do we want to lead? And again, this all lends itself back to being on the same page. Um, number three, I'm sorry, number four, uh, risk mitigation. Being on the same page helps mitigate those risks. Um, and, you know, if you know which one has, let's say one of you has a pension, so you know which pension is stable, which re which retirement accounts have the are, are, are riskier retirement accounts and investment accounts. And so by having the conversations together, what it does is it, it helps you um, mitigate and manage those risks and really balance those risks. So I know the accounts that my wife has for retirement. I know she knows the ones that I've saved for. We've put all of those together. So as we put together our budget, as we start to take a look at what's going to happen when we hit a bear market, what's going to happen if we have some type of financial issue, uh, we're both on the same page and we both know the mechanisms that are in place to uh, to mitigate those one of the things that i'm incredibly concerned about is um running out of money i i always think i'm gonna run out of money and so between her and my financial advisor we started to take a look and had a very in-depth co uh, conversation about all of the levers that are in play in the event that something were to happen which put me in, in, a, in an enhanced level of comfort as it relates to um What's, what, what could possibly happen down the road. So now I don't worry about that anymore. But again, had we not had those conversations, then I would have gone off with a set of concerns. She would have been comfortable and it would have created perhaps some of that conflict. Uh, number six, or I'm sorry, number five, uh, tax efficiency. Um, it helps you optimize your tax planning strategies. The more that you bring things together, the more that you're on the same page, the more you can plan for those taxes. And one of the biggest costs for retirees during retirement are taxes. If you don't plan for your taxes early, then they're gonna hit you late. And you're gonna pay some significant taxes because along with inflation, along with required minimum distributions, along with all of the additional, the gains from your, from your investments, uh, those all create downstream tax consequences that you don't want to be hit with by surprise. You know, if you're like me, most of us can deal with whatever life has to give you. But where we really have a problem is when there's a surprise. And where I really have a problem is when those surprises impact my financial well-being. And, and one of those surprises that has a high likelihood of coming up if it's not discussed between you and your spouse are taxes. If you don't talk about it, then your spouse's taxes may be different than your taxes. And then when you look at the overall tax picture where you thought it was good, it may not be as good as you thought and you find yourself in a, in a difficult situation. So I suggest that, you know, this is another reason it's important for you to, to have those conversations. Um, your estate plans. Number six, your estate planning. And you ensure that your estate plans are in sync. If something were to happen to you, something were to happen to your spouse, where does that money go? Um, how are assets going to be transferred? One of the things that we took a look at way before we started looking at retirement, in fact, at the beginning of our, of our journey, we looked at creating a, a trust. So if something were to happen to us, we don't have our loved ones stuck in probate uh, trying to deal with the assignment of those assets. Um, and, and we have a trust that's together. So it makes it easier if something were to happen to me, then everything is automatically with her and, and vice versa. And then if something happens to both of us, where does our where does our where does our money, where do our assets go? And it also helps with some of the emotional support because the less you have to worry about during that time, uh, the, the easier it is to deal with. And it's it's a piece that we don't want to talk about. Um, I certainly don't want to talk about it, um, but it's something, it's inevitable. Um, you know, it's one of the things they say that the two things that, that you're guaranteed are, are death and taxes. And so um, it's funny, but not funny, true, but halfway not, hopefully not too true with the advancements in medicine. But you want to, but you know, it's, it's important that you're on the same page 
so you can have those so you're you're both on the same page as it as it relates to how things will happen alleviate the stress and 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 you'll be able to deal with with what's at hand at that time um number seven emotional support you know retirement can be stressful and when you have your partner involved then you have somebody to, to talk about all aspects of your retirement planning is you, you see me you see others on youtube and we talk about how great it is and how much how 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 much we enjoy the fact that we retired and, and it's the best decision that we ever made and the fact is is that it's true but even though it's the best decision i ever made it's still stressful at times and so to have somebody to talk about each of the pieces so as i used the example earlier about running out of money and, and being able to talk to my spouse about that or my significant other about that my wife about that again using all the operative terms is it, it made it easier to support me so i didn't have the apprehension that i had initially because i was able to understand those levers but if we hadn't been if we had parallel plans that didn't talk about it then i would continue to be stressed in the time that's supposed to be the least stressful of all my time which is which is my retirement um number nine uh, beneficiary considerations you know ensuring that we know who's going to get what um which kids are going to get what which family members are going to get what um which charities are going to be donated to and all of those and so by having that conversation it we we are on the same page and and, and we know uh exactly where all of our funds are going to go we've talked about it uh, we have some causes that we're very passionate about, and we know that those um, those causes are what percentage they're going to get, how much they're going to get. Um, I know how much other family members are going to get when we pass, and we know all the conditions around that and so on. And so, again, it alleviates the stress, and it and it just it it makes things uh, clear in terms of protecting the assets, so there's no apprehension because. The last thing you want if something were to happen is um, confusion. Um, and then uh, number 10, and this is the one that I think we've all been waiting for, and it's, it's really important. But before we talk about number 10, I just ask that if, if you're finding this information useful or helpful in any way, please consider subscribing to the channel. I always promise I'm not going to try to sell you anything, but I am doing a commercial for myself. And I'd like you to subscribe to the channel. It, it helps the channel. And it helps me continue to bring quality content to you and help you as you go through that journey. All right, so number 10, improve communication. Um, engaging in retirement planning together really fosters open communication about financial matters, and that's beneficial for the health of the relationship. When you look at a relationship between two people, 90% of relationships that fail fail because of something that is involving communication. And I've read statistics about couples getting divorced and there being issues just because they don't communicate about money. One person is under incredible financial stress from losing a job and the other person is out at Amazon buying a bunch of stuff and that creates friction. And so the things that you don't talk about are the things that create the biggest issues. And when you're retired, the one thing that you don't want to have to focus on is you don't want to have to focus on stress that's driven by money. And so, and, and the, the sooner you communicate about it, the more often and the more honest you are in communicating about money and during retirement, the better off you're going to be. Just like everything else in our relationships. We, the more we communicate, the more we talk, the more we hash out issues, the more we come together on ideas or at least understand where some of our departures are from each other, the better off we're going to be. And I, I just suggest that if you, if you think about communication, not just in terms of money, but just in terms of your overall relationship, you're going to be 10 times better. And it's easy, uh, again, not to go too far down the path. But it's easy to talk about communication and listening as a passive process. But quality communication and an active and effective listening is actually an active process. 
physiologically, when you're listening, your body goes through physiological changes because there are things that are happening that are allowing you to listen at the, at the physiological level. So again, improve communication. I can't, um, I can't, I can't emphasize it enough. Uh, it's incredibly important. And the more you talk about your retirement planning with your spouse, the better off your retirement is going to be. And then you'll be in this thing together. And I'll tell you from my own experience, it's a blast. So on that note, I think I've covered it all. And again, I'll go through the 10 again, just so um, you get them. Number one, you'll have a shared vision and goals. Number two, you have financial cohesion. Number three, um, expense management. Number four, risk mitigation. Number five, tax efficiency. Number six, estate planning. Number seven, emotional support. Number eight, adaptability. Number nine, beneficiaries. And number 10, improved communication. So again, these are the 10 reasons why it's important to involve your spouse in the um, in your retirement planning. So please let me know what you thought in the comments. And, and again, please feel free to like, subs uh, subscribe, and then share this with others that you think might benefit from it. So on that note, have a good rest of your day, and I will talk to you soon.